Hi, today we are going to discuss on the topic homeostasis or the body's balancing machine. As the name indicates, it is a balance between the internal and the external environments. The internal environment refers to the body's internal environment or to be more specific, the extracellular fluid. So, various organs and the organ systems are involved in homeostasis and in this topic or in the later part of this video I'll be explaining about the role of the organs and certain mechanisms involved in homeostasis. Talking about the definition of homeostasis it is the stability balance or equilibrium between the internal and external environments now what does this term indicate homeo means similar and stasis means stable it is about keeping the internal environment constant and all the body systems like the circulatory system, respiratory system, nervous system, etc. contribute to homeostasis. Each organ system has a role to play in one way or the other in maintaining the balance. And any sort of alteration in homeostasis leads to the condition called disease. Now the question is, how does the body work? What are the mechanisms involved? Or how do they find out that there is some sort of imbalance between the internal and external environments? So the answer to this question lies here. It has got the good stuff that are the nutrients. The bad stuff, waste materials and for communication, neurons and hormones. For fastest communication, we have the neurons and for slow type of communication, we have the hormones. So through these neurons and hormones, the body gets signaled or they will get various sort of information regarding the imbalance and also the level of nutrients and waste materials lead to some sort of implications or they indicate the body about the imbalance. So we have to know about the organs that are involved in handling the good stuff as well as the bad stuff. Talking about the organs handling the good stuff, they are the circulatory system. So the circulatory system has got the heart as the pumping organ and the blood vessels mainly arteries and veins. The arteries carry blood from the heart to the tissues or cells and veins carry blood from the tissues back to the heart. So the nutrients as well as oxygen pass through the arteries, arterioles with lesser diameter and end in capillaries. The capillaries are seen supplying the cells of various tissues. So the arteries, arterioles and capillaries deliver oxygen as well as nutrients to the cells. The cells take up those nutrients, do their metabolic activities and release carbon dioxide and waste materials into the veins. They carry those waste materials to the heart. So in this way 
the circulatory system handles the good stuff then comes the respiratory system that is mainly concerned with taking in of oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide containing blood that reaches the right part of the heart gets ejected to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries and in the lungs oxygen carbon dioxide diffusion takes place and oxygen enters the arteries and the carbon dioxide gets released through the exhaled air so now the oxygen that has entered into the blood vessels mainly the pulmonary veins reaches the heart especially the left side of the heart and from here through the systemic circulation oxygen reaches the tissues so that is the role of lungs in handling the good stuff then comes the digestive system through which we take in food and the food that is ingested through our mouth is digested by the stomach and small intestine absorbed in the small intestine and enters the blood vessels so these are the three organs that handle the good stuff now what about handling the bad stuff the bad stuff are handled by two main structures one being the liver liver is also called the body's laboratory because various sort of chemical reactions take place in the liver liver does the detoxification process so that the toxic materials are compensated they are cleared and at the same time it also helps in storage of various materials like glucose etc then comes the kidneys that also help in handling the bad stuff by excreting the waste materials through urine so these are the two main organs that handle the bad stuff then for various sorts of communication as i said before for far sort of communication we have the neurons and for the slow communication we have various sort of hormones released by glands called endocrine glands so it is through these structures homeostasis is attained now how does these structures help in balancing or in maintaining homeostasis for that there are two feedback mechanisms the two main feedback mechanisms are positive feedback mechanisms and negative feedback mechanisms talking about the positive feedback mechanism as the name indicates it is some sort of positive reactions taking place in the body it is also called a self amplifying cycle so for first of all a stimulus for this feedback mechanism it initiates a process and that process creates a response now what is the thing called positive feedback mechanism this is actually the process taking place in our body first of all a stimulus comes it stimulates our body to initiate a process the process 
finally gives back a response. And now in positive feedback mechanism, this response stimulates the process again and again to generate the same response each and every time. So instead of suppressing the stimulation, sorry, suppressing the response, the process is amplified so that more and more response is generated. That is why it's called positive feedback mechanism. Here we can see that a process is being stimulated again and again. So what happens? A response will be generated that is amplified each and every time. So it moves again and again or the process takes place again and again. Instead of getting a counteracting response to a stimulus, the response is intensified. It's like more, more, more instead of stop it. That's called feedback mechanism and an example for feedback mechanism especially positive feedback mechanism the action of a hormone called oxytocin oxytocin helps in the contraction of uterus during delivery which is otherwise known as parturition so how does this process take place when a fully grown fetus with its head pointed downwards touches or gives some sort of pressure on the cervix which is the mouth of the uterus in the female reproductive system the cervix has got some sort of receptors those receptors get stimulated and the stimulations will be taken to the brain the brain especially the hypothalamus and this hypothalamus stimulates the posterior pituitary which is the main organ endocrine gland for releasing oxytocin so what happens now is that this oxytocin reaches the uterus causes uterine contractions to push the baby into the female birth canal and finally to the exterior. So what happens is that when the contractions become severe, the baby will be pushed more to the cervix portion so that the cervix get dilated and the baby moves forward. And as the contractions increase, the baby's head gives more pressure on the cervix which again stimulates the hypothalamus and posterior pituitary to release more and more oxytocin. So as more and more oxytocin is released, the contractions become severe and the baby gets pushed each and every time the contractions move on. So here what happens is that when the pressure increases on the cervix portion, oxytocin release also increases. So as the stimulations increase, the response is also increased. That is why it is called positive feedback mechanism. Talking about negative feedback mechanism, it's just the opposite of positive feedback mechanism. So here, first of all, a stimulus arises, a process is initiated and finally a response is generated now what happens here is that when enough response has taken place the response inhibits the process so that now the process is completely stopped instead of having a more and more response the response is completely stopped by inhibiting the process so in this way the body brings back its set point 
so keeping the homeostasis like that so here the stimulus triggers a counter response an opposite response in order to come back to its set point this brings back the body to the set point keeping the homeostasis and the negative feedback mechanism is the main mechanism that is involved in maintaining the homeostatic balance when a process is generated a counter response is created like so in this way the feedback mechanism maintains the balance the process and response equally maintains the balance and an example for this negative feedback mechanism yet another endocrine gland that is thyroid gland so initially the hypothalamus releases a hormone called trh thyrotropin releasing hormone that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release another hormone called tsh thyroid stimulating hormone this hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormones mainly thyroxine it goes to the target organs and generates its response but when the level of thyroid hormone that is thyroxine increases in the blood it creates a negative response or negative loop inside the body so what happens is that this thyroxine suppresses the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary to stop the production of trh and tsh thereby stopping the production of thyroid hormones by the thyroid gland so here instead of stimulating these two endocrine glands it suppresses these two endocrine glands so that the balance is maintained this happens when the level of thyroxine increases abnormally in the blood so in order to bring back to its normal level the actions of hypothalamus and anterior pituitary are suppressed so that's what happens here that is when the process is generated and a response created then the normal level is taken place the response itself suppresses the process thereby maintaining the balance so this slide shows the difference between positive and negative feedback mechanism so in the case of positive feedback mechanism it's like we need more the body needs more 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 it's not like no we don't need that no it's not like that in positive feedback mechanism we need more and more and more we are not yet saturated so that's the thing but in the case of negative feedback mechanism it's like when the level has attained it's better to stop so that no other issues take place in the body so with this we come to the end of this topic and thank you